Hello and welcome to Lazada Insider, featuring knowledge that makes a difference. We share trusted insights, forward-looking perspectives, and exclusive expert interviews to keep you ahead of the curve. This series is brought to you by Lazada Group Strategy. Hi, I'm your host, Katrina, and welcome to another episode of Lazada Insider. If you enjoy this series, make sure to subscribe and follow this channel for more. Today, we're going to discuss about the fashion industry. The fashion industry is going through large scale changes as a result of the pandemic, technology development, and cultural shifts. And staying ahead of these changes and the future trends is an absolute must for businesses in Southeast Asia. And today we are very delighted to be joined by expert guest Roshan from Red Seer, one of the fastest growing companies in the internet advisory space. And he will be sharing with us his latest insights on the critical trends and opportunities in Southeast Asia fashion category. Roshan leads the Red Seer business in Southeast Asia, and he has more than 15 years of experience in investment advisory and consulting services. Hi, Roshan, welcome. And thank you for joining us today on Lazada Insider. Good afternoon, uh, Katrina. Very pleased to be part of this discussion. Great to have you. Uh, you are the partner with Red Seer. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about your position and what it entails. Right. So I'm based here in Singapore, been here for almost 13 plus years. Uh, briefly about Red Seer, uh, we provide actionable insights on the new economy and digital sectors in South Asia, as well as the Middle East. We work with uh, private equities and venture capital investors, as well as some of the leading companies that operate in these uh, new economy sectors. Uh, specific to my role at Red Seer, this is focused around uh, business development work in Southeast Asia. Now, this involves everything from idea generation to team building to sales and marketing, as well as execution of the project. What do you see are the major shifts that you have observed in the fashion industry in Southeast Asia? Right. So if we were to break down fashion into a few categories, namely apparel, footwear, and accessories, we see quite a few interesting trends within these. I'll just give you a backdrop of what has happened last year, and then uh, that will possibly give you a context of how we see things shaping up going forward. Sure. Now, for apparel, last year was fairly weak, and our sense is uh, potentially the sector witnessed a high single digit to low double digit kind of year on year decline at a sector level at the apparel. Now, obviously the reasons are uh, around the mobility restrictions that we saw in most countries. And as people spent less time outside their homes, the demand for apparel was relatively muted for most part of the year. The good part though is uh, towards the end of uh, the last year when uh, mobility restrictions were being eased, uh, we saw a bit of bounce back coming back in this sector. Now, within apparel, directionally, we think uh, looking forward, uh, formal and party wear categories uh, could start seeing some sort of recovery around middle of 2021. Uh, and this will be driven by improved consumer demand uh, as we expect the lockdowns to be progressively eased. And uh, there are expectations that the various platforms, at least on the online side, will start offering various promotions. So these two, uh, these two factors, in our view, should trigger a, a bit of uh, demand from the consumer side. And hence, mm -hmm. uh, we, we expect uh, the party and formal wear kind of uh, segments to see a sort of good comeback uh, towards middle of this year. Now, again, the context is fairly clear. Last year, these categories were under a lot of pressure. Moving on, uh, if we look at, uh, two other categories one is accessories and footwear interestingly uh, they didn't do well but uh, they were definitely much better off compared to fashion and uh, our estimate is these two uh, categories saw anything uh, in the range of uh, high single digit to low double digit kind of growth for the whole of last year mm. uh, and uh, the biggest surprise perhaps was uh, in athleisure and sportswear category uh, here, as you can imagine, a lot of focus from uh, consumers towards uh, you know, maintaining and taking care of their health. And so mm -hmm. the segment saw very robust growth. And in uh, specific countries, uh, our view is uh, the growth was in uh, the range of triple digits year on year. So this was clearly uh, one of the sort of strong uh, categories for last year. And uh, yeah, that kind of wraps up 
sort of quick view of where things were and how we see things uh, shaping up ahead. Yeah, great for sharing. Let's probably talk about, you know, from a consumer perspective, has consumers demand and their journey of shopping for fashion category changed as well? And um, how can business adapt to these changes? Right. Great question, uh, Katrina, on that one. Uh, from a demand perspective, uh, I'd like to highlight four areas. And then after that, I'll come to the journey part. Uh, on the demand side, we see first sustainable fashion. Uh, what we saw was uh, COVID had impacted uh, the demand uh, for categories seen as uh, you know, uh, developing on the back of uh, sustainability uh, in a very positive way. And people were, uh, be that fashion or other categories, looking out for products which were uh, being developed and marketed as being sustainable and good for the ecosystem or ecology uh, at large. So this was also visible in fashion. And uh, what we noticed is uh, uh, this was applicable to fabrics that were used for fashion as well as apparel as a category. And uh, interestingly, we started seeing these trends uh, in the first quarter of 2020. And uh, over the course of the year, we saw that uh, the awareness levels about these uh, sustainable categories, specific in fashion, it kept building up over time. And so the interest level is there. And um, our view is this is not a one-off trend. Uh, this is going to be a long-term structural trend and people are going to be looking out for products specifically in fashion uh, which ensure that uh, they sort of tie up well from from the sustainability perspective mm -hmm. uh, within this uh, an interesting uh, trend we have seen is uh, the apparel that are made from blended fibers uh, that has uh, possibly seen more demand as compared to you know, apparels made from purely natural fibers now uh, in a way, this kind of goes back to the overall theme of circular economy, wherein the products get reused in ways that go beyond the initial or first use case. So those are very positive trends and uh, all of it showing up under sustainable fashion. Mm. Uh, the second interesting trend is uh, the willingness of mass market consumers to look beyond uh, the premium or international brands. And this is great news for local brands uh, because they are now willing to try uh, local brands, which which uh, uh, you know wasn't the case in the past, and uh, we have also noticed that uh, the small business sellers operating in fashion who have been able to position local brands appropriately uh, with the help of various uh, e-commerce platforms, they have been able to ride on this trend, uh, and in some cases there have been you know explicit uh, callouts by government as well as partnerships between e-commerce platforms and uh, uh, the various government bodies to sort of support the local uh, small business uh, owners. So that has also resonated well with consumers. And uh, that uh, seems to be a trend which is working well as well. Mm. The third part is uh, around uh, the demand for multipurpose apparels and clothes. Uh, and uh, essentially, it means a product which can be used both for work purpose and possibly also for uh, uh, relaxation purpose. You don't necessarily have to change between them. And uh, uh, the, the nuanced finding there uh, is uh, people appreciate uh, the fabrics from their comfort point of view and not just uh, the fact that they are visually more appealing. So mm -hmm. very interesting trend as in people appreciating the functional aspect of the apparels. And not just the the you know uh, the looks of the products that they get to wear, and then uh, a, a bit about uh, the resiliency that we saw in accessories and athleisure categories. So this is something uh, which possibly uh, was very visible, uh, I would say, from second quarter last week. Uh, mm -hmm. While a lot of uh, sellers focus on uh, apparels, what we also saw is. Uh, uh, the sellers who were uh, working on uh, categories as accessories, uh, they were able to uh, do well because these were uh, uh, categories which are not affiliated with very well-known brands. So there is there is a pull for unbranded products as long as uh, they meet the right sort of criteria and uh, slightly more resilient uh, categories. So that has worked well with consumers as well. So just to quickly sum it up from a demand perspective, we see uh, fairly in high interest in sustainable fashion. 
willingness to work with local brands and uh, use fashion for uh, you know multi purposes not just for the uh, look and feel but also the uh, functional aspects of that and fourth aspect is uh, looking beyond the apparel there is a fair bit of demand for accessories and at leisure categories and so sellers who have been able to cater to these um, uh, you know changing habits and demands they have been slightly better off compared to others the other query you had about consumer's journey um, so our simplistic take here is uh, while fashion over the last few years has moved as a key online category there were lots of uh, buyers who still prefer to uh, use the offline channel and sometimes the omni channel format and uh, over the last 12 months or so we have noticed that many of these users have um, either by choice or by force have been uh, uh, you know moving to the uh, online platforms so uh, that is a big shift which has happened and a uh, lot of that could be uh, irreversible shift because people are now comfortable you know choosing the products online making the payments and they're happy with the way the logistics support has worked out so it's fairly convenient for them so i think that uh, offline part of the segment uh, has has uh, uh, slightly diminished in terms of the customer journey now and it's more of online but looking ahead uh, as uh, let's say the uh, you know constraints around mobility are uh, addressed possibly there will be an interest in uh, going back to the offline channels to some extent because there is still a bit of value at least in some consumer cohorts uh, around the touch and feel of the fashion products before they actually buy one so offline will definitely remain important but progressively we see that uh, a significant number of users particularly uh, the consumers in the millennials or gen z category uh, they are uh, wanting to have online and omni channel uh, options for fashion purchase so i think uh, from a relative standing perspective uh, definitely uh, the the relevance of offline remains but progressively uh, various uh, sellers a small businesses or large they should definitely look out for various technological tools available out there be that with e-commerce platforms or otherwise and make use of these tools because we see uh, the category continuing to grow on the online platforms i hope that uh, gave you some color around how the uh, journey and demand trends are yeah. evolving yeah and definitely excellent but also when we talk about fashion category it is in nature a long tail category with very intense competition so how can small business owners really stand out from this kind of competition great question uh, katrina and this is uh, clearly something which should be on the minds of a lot of uh, smes and many of them operate in the fashion category i'll just share a few points again it's not an exhaustive list uh the overriding or overarching theme is uh, small business owners definitely uh, need to be nimble and it's actually uh, something which is which could be their strength unlike a large business where lots of things have to be uh, you know bureaucratic potentially small business owners can be nimble and uh, keeping that in mind if a few things they could do differently from the large business owners perhaps so mm -hmm. first is definitely leverage the data and value added services provided by e-commerce platforms such as uh, yourself lazada uh, this uh, in our view helps to understand the demand patterns in a better way uh, and that, that therein lies the value of uh, working together with a platform and these are demands that uh, obviously have a local context but also you can get a better feel of how trends are shaping up in the regional level so business owners can use that to identify trends uh, that could possibly be at play in their own geographies and uh, this has been kind of seen in other parts of the country or region and uh, essentially it allows them to have the right product mix right pricing mix and uh, they can go after targeted sales and minimize inventory risk so the first point is essentially use make use of the uh, tools and uh, data services value added data services Uh, that are available from the e-commerce platforms uh, second is uh, around uh, uh, specific to fashion which is a highly seasonal category and um, uh, we noticed quite a few uh, uh, business owners struggle with managing logistics and uh, our assessment is uh, while uh, internal logistics can work well 
it it works well only to certain extent uh, so it it's definitely worthwhile exploring the option of uh, fulfilling services being offered by uh, platforms such as yourself uh, specifically around high demand periods uh, wherein you may not have uh, the wherewithal to sort of take care of the uh, increased logistics demand uh, and essentially it sort of falls back into having a resilient supply chain network and better managing and planning of the logistics and this can be a fairly uh, big differentiator in our view between business owners who actually uh, make use use of it and essentially tap into the demand which is coming their way or just not be able to service that uh, so that is where I, our view is uh, you know just just reach out and then figure out the additional logistics capabilities or support that uh, it's available out there and just to sort of elaborate on this um, this view this year uh, around second quarter uh, the muslim festive period of labaran that that's where uh, we expect fashion to see a seasonal uh, sort of you know a high kind of trend and so business owners would do well to be prepared for online sales during this uh, period uh, and they can um, definitely get into uh, you know different discussions with the platforms beforehand and then be better prepared to meet that uh, the third aspect, I would say it's more of a selective use. This would be around live streaming and uh, shop attainment. Uh, again, I use the word uh, selective because not all small uh, business owners uh, may be uh, you know, positioned to use it. But when applicable, uh, definitely explore the option. We have seen in some cases it has worked well for some of the business owners who have been able to push categories or products uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, has resonated well with consumers. So that uh, would be option number three. And fourth is uh, when feasible, again, uh, while you have time, the SME business owners uh, should uh, think about uh, the omni-channel approach. Uh, this is uh, uh, essentially catering to the consumer cohort who still value the touch and feel aspect related to fashion. Of course, it's not uh, relevant uh, as long as the mobility restrictions are in place. But once that, that kind of uh, gets sorted, maybe they should uh, Look at a mix of uh, you know online with offline, with, with, which could be their existing facilities, and how they can sort of uh, engage with customers along these multiple touch points. So those would be the four um, sort of uh, out of many potential options for small business owners uh, to sort of uh, uh, you know stay ahead of the game in the fashion category. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all these advices. Um, it is very useful for our small business owners. Last but not least, let's talk about future. Could you share your point of view on the future of fashion industry in Southeast Asia with us? Uh, another great question. Uh, so it will possibly involve a bit of recapping of what I've already said. But essentially, um, I would say in, in three big buckets, one is uh, uh, fashion going forward will be less about uh, uh, style statement per se. It will possibly be more about functional aspects. There is going to be a, a demand for local brands as long as uh, they are you know, catering to the functional aspect. Of course, you cannot completely discount the style side of the equation. That is relevant, but uh, possibly less relevant than in the past. Uh, and uh, it, it opens up the opportunity for local brands and small sellers to sort of uh, gain traction with customers. Uh, same time, have a diversity of products and not just limit to apparels. Look at uh, the emerging trends, uh, which would be, let's say, masks till the period uh, we have this mobility restriction and the pandemic is not under control. Accessories, uh, which goes well with apparels and uh, athleisure or sportswear. So look at the product mix. Uh, be uh, nimble and uh, be willing to sort of uh, change the product mix as the change as the sort of demand uh, kind of changes. So that would be point one. Second is uh, uh, just looking at the uh, pattern or, or the kind of consumers on the online platform in the fashion category. Uh, our view is it's dominated by females in the millennials and Gen Z category. Uh, they are possibly the largest buyers out there. Of course, there would be males uh, and uh, in uh, coming in from other uh, age group categories also. Uh, but uh, bulk of these fashion focused buyers uh, are in the mid 20s to early 30s age group. So 
whatever sort of initiatives are put in place by the e-commerce platforms uh, focused on fashion, as well as the um, sellers uh, and business owners, they should be mindful of this age group and then sort of curate the products which would be appeal, uh, appealing to uh, these age group. And uh, as I mentioned again, uh, the sustainability aspects of the products being sold uh, will be very important. And uh, what is seen in early stages in, let's say, Europe and other countries is the, um, is the appeal of uh, pre-used or pre-loved uh, uh, luxury products or fashion products which are now finding uh, you know acceptance by a lot of consumers. Obviously, possibly somewhere down the line, uh, Southeast Asia would also be ready for that kind of uh, product category, wherein people uh, are um, OK to sort of you know, purchase uh, luxury products at a lower price point. But uh, these are products essentially which have been used uh, in the past. So that is something to look out for. So sustainability will be a big theme to look out for going forward. And then third part is uh, more to do with the uh, current macroeconomic outlook, uh, which is broadly modest, modest, I would say. So keeping that in mind, uh, the mass market level, uh, the appeal or the attraction for products will be in the value category. Uh, and as I mentioned, the premium category uh, will possibly be there. It will be resilient, but it's not going to be very, very you know, appealing to the mass market. Um, and so for the next few quarters, small business owners and sellers could possibly focus on providing products which uh, are perceived to offer good value for money. Uh, so that would be um, the sort of key, three key takeaways uh, as we look ahead for fashion industry. Thank you. It's very insightful. Thank you. Um, that brings us to the end of today's episode. Um, thank you very much, Joshan, for the great sharing with us. Great, uh, Katrina. Good speaking to you. And thank you once again for the opportunity. This is Lazada Insider, brought to you by Lazada Group Strategy. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you click follow and subscribe so you don't miss our latest insights and expert interviews. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, take care.